Hi everybody, how's it going? Uh, my name is Darlene. I'm with Featherway Doctor here in beautiful North Idaho. Oops, front face of the camera. Sorry, everybody. Oh no, that's right. Okay. Whew. Okay. Well, welcome to the show. It's Monday night, which means that I am doing a show called Ask the Doctor. Um, tonight we had a write-in uh, for someone looking for a little help with machine binding techniques. So um, we're going to talk about that. I also have two new product releases that we're going to talk about that are up and on the website and ready to go. So let me pull up my feeds and let's go from there. Hey, Ray, can you bring me the two new products that are up on the wall? I forgot to grab them before I got on. So how's everybody's weekend? Mine was a little um, short. Short is a good word. Um, I did a lot of lawn maintenance manual labor around my house. Uh, the snow is coming this week. And so um, it's time to get everything put up. We did a run to storage. We put our fishing raft up. We put our e-bikes up for the winter. So we're ready. Bring it on. Apparently it was snowing at Denise's house today down in Coeur d'Alene. Not cool, Mother Nature. Not cool. Um, all right. Let me say hi to some friends here. <clears throat> How about all you all? That's plural for y'all and I'm an honorary southerner. Um, we were, uh, what were you, what were you all, all you all doing this weekend? Hi. Um, let's see. Good. Let me just bring my, um, I was coming in to see, um, if, if you guys had like a quilting machine. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to ask you guys how much you guys charged for like the king size. Okay. Let me get to my studio. Well, what's the total of a queen size quilt? A queen is 202 if it's 90 by 90. What's a queen? 100 by 100 would be 250. 250? It's two and a half cents a square inch. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Customers walking to the door, talking to you guys online. Um, okay, sorry, everybody. I'm going to say hi. I have one that I really Okay. All right, let me say hi to some friends. Don Williams is on. Hi, sweetheart. Yes, you made it live. Kathy is on from East Texas. <laughs> it's most assuredly Monday. Yes, it is. I was crabby this morning with it. just not for any particular reason. Just I apparently don't like Mondays very much. Uh, Linda is on from Tennessee. Judy's on from Kansas. Hi, Judy. Please keep... Oh, Kathy from East Texas, you don't want me to send you any snow. I I'm willing to share. <laughs> Pauline's on from Dallas. Debbie's on from Sumner. Hi, I thought you said summer for a second and I thought you were being a wise guy. <laughs> uh, let's see, Debbie's on from Kentucky. Let's see, oh, uh, Don Williams says that she dodged a bullet with hail, so worked for two days, but the car is in the garage now. Storm's expected tonight. Yikes, be careful. Uh, Nancy's on from Lake Stevens. Hey, Jen Jen. Mel, hi, Mel from Bain St. Louis. Hope you and Joe are doing well. Uh, Judy P. Oh, she's off the IV, everybody. Yay, Judy P. Progress is a lovely thing. That's amazing. Oh, no volume. No, my volume's good. Try yours. I can see I'm pinging my little sound register. Um, it's Kathleen Sheffield. <clears throat> Let's see. Judy Dancer is on from Michigan. Hi, Sandra. How are you doing, local friend? <laughs> Kathy Zoka over in Addie, Washington says, snow on all the hills outside my window. Oh, snow in Montana. Hi, Christine. Hi, Kathy in SoCal. Okay, let's see. Denise is on. Odie's on. Missy's on. Polly's on from UK. Uh, Charlene Rigby's on. Hi. How are you? Or Rigby. Yeah, I said that right. Okay, I'm doing something weird in my contacts. I got my eyes checked today. And he gave me one contact for far away and one contact for close up. And I have to admit, my whole depth perception is a little messed up right now. <laughs> All right, let's see. Can you send me some info? Can you send me some snow, Charlene? In Australia, I will for sure send you some snow. Yes. <laughs> All right, so today, oh, Karen's on from Sweden. Hi, Karen. Thanks for joining us. Wow, we have Australia and Sweden on tonight. That's amazing. Um, all right, we've got a couple of new products on the website. Um, we are doing, I've been manufacturing some products because we have a big craft, Christmas craft, not Christmas crap. 
Christmas craft fair coming up the birthday of uh, my birthday weekend in November. So I've been manufacturing a lot of stuff, getting ready for that. But you guys get to benefit from it too, my favorite online community. So we have now scissor fobs available. They're beaded. I don't know if you guys can see them really well. And they have a little cute sewing machine charm at the bottom of them. A scissor fob it attaches to your sewing machine thread scissors. Um, and it's so you know yours are yours because a lot of them look similar, especially if you're out of class or you're on a retreat. So these are a great little gift item. I believe I have them marked for $8.95 on the website. You have two different styles, a silver sewing machine and a black sewing machine. Hi, Sandy Reese. <laughs> yes, <laughs> no depth reception. Correct. I'm hoping I don't sew my hand tonight with these new contacts. The uh, the person, the doctor, eye doctor said... Um, that I, he insisted that I give it a week for my brain to figure it out. And I'm like, I don't know. We're day one and I'm not, not loving it. <laughs> All right. This is our next new product. This is actually a return of a product. Um, this was on, we had these when we first opened the shop and literally have been out of stock for almost a year. Well, I finally got, yes, my Bernina is back. Miss Christine. Um, this, these are, they're magnetic gla eyeglass holders. So you put, geez, what did I just do? You put, you can pin them on your clothes without actually putting holes in your clothes because they're held by a magnet and you can hold your reading glasses on your apron or on your blouse without, um, having to wear them on your head. <laughs> Karen, it's 78 in Ohio. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Will you make them with scissors on it? Uh, that's not a bad idea, actually. I didn't think about that, Mary, about with the fobs having actual thread scissors attached. I like it. That's not a bad idea. Anyway, these are now back on the site. They're all a little different. They have anti-clock faces on them, buttons, and some other pretty pretties. Because if we're going to wear something on our clothes, we might as well make it pretty. Are you going to this? Yes, Debbie, I am going to the Sew and Craft Fair in Puyallup. And not the buggy barn one in the fall, but I'll be at the big, big one, the Sew Expo, um, first week of March. <laughs> Patience, grasshopper. All right, so our write-in question for tonight's show comes from Evil Twin Denise. Um, she needs to do a machine binding, and she needs a refresher course. So ironically, I had a little pillow topper that I've been working on that is now done, and it's enveloped on the back for a pillow form, and I need to do the finishing technique on it. And so it was all very timely that Denise needed a lesson on uh, machine binding. So here we go. Is everybody ready? Oh, Denise, this is for you. Come back. She just said, crap, work's calling. I'm going to have to watch it on replay. So I took two, because it's just the 18-inch pillow topper. So I just needed two strips of two and a half inch fabrics. You lie right, right sides together on a uh, 90 degree angle and you sew this way. So that way when you open it up, you have a straight seam. Then you take your scissors and I'm going to cut the tabs off and then cut about a quarter of an inch off of the edge. So you should have two little cut off tabs like this. And then you have this. And then we're going to go over to the ironing board next. You guys are going to come with me. Hi, Kim from Manitoba. What did you quilt in the corner? Oh, of the this. I'm sorry. I thought you were. So I did little, little fur feathers. I'm fancy. And then this is that checkerboard technique. You guys can see it a little bit. I did white on white. I do, yes, Kathy Harris, I do, Fran wants to know, Denise quilt, yes, she does quilt a lot, actually, especially Denise quilts a lot in the winter time. She has too much to do with her hobby farm in the, in the summer, but a lot in the winter. Kathy Harris says, do you machine bind everything except for show quilts? I actually machine bind show quilts, too. My technique is pretty dialed in, and the only thing I have to do, Kathy, is they don't like it when your corners are open, so I have to whip stitch the um, corners closed. My my secret, here is the secret. I use the clear monopoly, which is a nylon polyester blend, 
to on in the bobbin of my machine and that way it hides if I don't quite hit the line. When judges are looking at quilt bindings for shows, they're looking for um, obviously straightness, they're looking for fullness, and they're looking for no open edges. And so I can achieve that look with all of that criteria on my machine. So that's what we do. No Mary Carnes, Denise makes quilt tops, but she does not finish them. She has an award-winning quilter for a sister that does her finishing work for her. <laughs> She's asking because the last time I was there, I sewed together a Halloween uh, fabric charm pack for as a table topper for her table. And so I did all of the quilting and the piecing on her Bernina. And then she still has to, I left her the binding to do. So that's why she needed the lesson. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go over to the ironing board. You guys are going to come with me. The one other than the join, we're going to press this open. <clears throat> the only other thing you need to know is your uh, beginning point needs to be trimmed to a 45 degree angle also. And I'll show you why. So this should be the leader. This is the first, the first piece that goes down. <laughs> That's okay, Mary. You can be a good, you're being a good sister by translating for her. Okay, I'm going to go to the um, iron. Let me go to my other camera. Okay. Hi. <laughs> all right, that's Reagan's messy desk. We're going to do your dots. Whose stuff is all over it? Okay. So now we're at the ironing board. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to press this little side seam open. Then I'm going to fold this in half lengthwise. Okay, this is important. So when I'm doing my beginning, I am going to fold this back a half of an inch or a quarter of an inch. And then I fold that close. This is where my beginning looks like. Okay, let me finish one last piece here. Okay, so there's my strip. Come on back over. Say hi to Luna. Say hi to everybody. <laughs> Down. 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 Hi, Patty. <laughs> what, what did Odie ask? Sandy, I'm always staring at a person that comes back. Anyone else have an issue remembering which side on the top? Oh, <laughs> you're... Anyone else have an issue remembering which side goes on top when finishing the binding? I So that's the other thing I do. I finish from the... I finish from the back of the quilt. So I'm going to flip this over to the back of the quilt. I already have my envelope, uh, envelope for my form done. And what I'm going to do... Uh, my iron is a Rowenta, very high-end Rowenta. <laughs> and Mary is bragging about finishing her Christmas shopping already. Uh, yes, Christine, the, my iron works fabulously. They, I had the steamer on. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to start by opening up my binding strip and I'm going to start with it open. And I'm just gonna sew, oopsie, a few inches. And the reason why I do that is so that it doesn't get all crazy on me and wonky. And then I'm gonna close it and I'm gonna sew back up at two inches. Now, I have my walking foot on. That's a big secret to this looking right, is having your walking foot on. Um, I know my walking foot with my Bernina is not a quarter of an inch walking foot, but um, I know exactly that in the center of the right feed dog is where my quarter inch should be. 
So um, that is how I'm able to keep a good seam allowance even on my thing. So, oh, I just did that without telling you what I was doing. Okay, so on this, I sewed to a quarter of an inch into the corner. I folded it back and finger pressed this down and then I um, folded this over the top. And then I'm gonna find on my, <clears throat> I'm not gonna make a loop. I'm going to put my needle down in a quarter of an inch off of this corner and then roll my piece around. I'll show you what this looks like here in a second. Let me get more now in a second. So again, I'm on the back of the quilt. This is what it looks like. So you can see my corner is a quarter of an inch on this side, quarter of an inch on this side, and I did not get the fold of fabric. Same thing on this corner. Finger press down, roll over the top, right back in. Now notice I am using, I have a red binding and I'm using red thread that matches so that it's invisible. The reason why we do that join with the 90 degrees is because we don't want to bulk of fabric uh, sewn up into the, um, so when we go to fold this around the other side, we don't want all of those seams coming together and kind of causing a big bump, if you will. So I love this technique for binding. I can do a king size quilt in about 45 minutes. And I honestly don't enjoy a lot of handwork and binding is not something that I want to get that I like doing by hand because it just enables me to not go on to the next thing I want to be working on. Let's see, Mary says, if you make one of those scissor fobs with scissors on it, I want one, please. I just ordered one, one of the other ones in the eyeglass. Oh, you're so sweet. Thank you, Mary. Franny says, when you wind the bobbin, do you wind at the regular setting or do you change it? I keep my setting at the regular setting, Franny, on the invisible thread. I only use that mon mono poly by Superior. We have it on our, our website. Um, it is a nylon polyester blend, so it's heat resistant for, with the iron. And it also um, will, okay, I'm at the join. So I just sewed into my, my V and now I'm gonna trim this back so that it all is hidden in here. And then this goes in here this goes in here. Okay, so now I have completed and I have gone all the way around. I have my nice join here. Now, if I was doing this for a show piece, I would need to close this. I would need to whip stitch this opening down in every one of my corners because that's one of the things that they will definitely ding you on when you're doing show pieces is having open, open edges. All right, so now I'm gonna fold this down like so, and I'm gonna just start sewing. I sew about three or four threads, maybe an eighth of an inch off of the fold so that it looks really nice and finished. And even over the, um, the opening, the start, this is the join. Okay, so as I approach my corner, I'm gonna pull my corner forward like this, and I'm gonna press it down with my hand as I'm coming up, and then what I'm gonna do is roll this forward. Let me trim all my extra threads, if I can see them with my terrible eyesight right now. Ray, I, can you hand me one of my big T-pins? Oh, never mind, I got one. Got it. Okay. Oh. Okay. Yes, I know I have a pen in my mouth. Everybody's going to yell at me. Okay. So what I do for my nice mitered corners, I fold everything really neatly 
and then I'm going to use um, my little pin to hold it. Okay, I won't stick that on my mouth again so I don't get lots of hate mail. Okay. Um, and then I just keep going. Notice I ended needle down so I had a nice clean pivot. And then I just kept rolling it around. So in my opinion, the, the secret to a really, really nice binding is um, using the clear thread on the bottom so you can't see if you're just ever so slightly off. Um, using the walking foot on the sewing machine and then doing nice, clean, mitered corners. So then you have this nice, beautiful corner and you can't even see my clear thread on the back because I have it so well hidden. So your, where's your needle on the top? My needle on the top side is about three or four threads, Fran, off of the fold on the binding strand. Almost to the edge, but not quite. And if I have extra threads, I just am really mindful to tuck them in. So this piece I'm working on is a, I'm putting together a pattern for an upcoming event. We're going to be releasing it to the, our online audience also. I'm calling it Winter in the Mountains, and this is one of five blocks. These are obviously pillow toppers, but if you make um, uh, five of these red and white blocks and four of the of the other one, you will have enough for a good size lap quilt or wall hanging and it is a quilt as you go so i think we're going to be working on that here in the next couple weeks so more sewing quilting lessons online but these are just the finished samples for the pillow topper they're 18 inch blocks totally feasible for a featherweight or any other modern machine okay that's it so here is my pillow topper all bound and ready to go. All right, Denise. <laughs> I hope that was good, a good demo for you since you're going to be now tackling this at home by yourself. Um, I do have red thread on the top, Kathy, um, and clear on the bottom. Let's see. All right. I think I got it. Okay. I think I answered everybody's questions. All right. Well, that was all I had for you today. I want to thank everybody for tuning in. I'll be back on Wednesday. <laughs> Thanks, Christine, uh, for Work in Progress Wednesday. Uh, so send your pictures into info, info at featherweightdoctor.com. I'll be on again right here, 4 o'clock Pacific on Facebook and YouTube. I hope everybody has a fantastic week this week. And everybody pray for uh, no snow for Darlene. <laughs> no, or, or what was the other place that was saying no snow? I can keep my snow. <laughs> I emailed you, feet. let's see. Do, 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 do. You've never done as a quilt as you go, Sandy Martin? I feel like this is your time, girl. This is your time. Thanks, all. Have a wonderful evening. I look forward to seeing you on Wednesday. Have a good night.